So next we want to talk about two fundamental one transistor circuits that we that we use a lot. We're going to talk about a common source and a common gate. And the circuits are actually kind of similar. So we're going to see a lot of a lot of connections between them. Remember both of these are cases where I have a current source that's really constraining the current in the device. And so in many ways what it's saying is the current in the chan in the channel has to stay fixed. And now the other three terminals, the gate, the source, and the drain are the parameters which all have to kind of balance each other to make this work. And what's really nice about it is given that my current starts off as an exponential and in subthreshold we see it written both places. You've got sort of fundamental transistor equation, gate voltage, source voltage, and drain voltage. Everything has to balance out because if this is fixed, this parameter in the front, which is handling, which is my current at threshold, handles the next part of it. Um, UT certainly would change the temperature, but that's probably not enough to make a difference. So all of these three things, the sum of this has to be constant. So I'll see this in both of these cases. And in the common source case, what I'm going to see is that the source voltage is held at ground. So I'm going to take Vs and just make it zero. In the common gate case, the gate is going to be held fixed. So this is all going to be, this is going to be constant. And these are the only two things that can change as a result. I'm going to see source and drain. Here I'm simply going to see gate and drain. And so I would probably expect, thinking about that those have to be balanced, that I'm mostly going to see cap and sigma. And so if I solve for the output voltage, what in fact I do see is a term in front, which is, con which is a constant, minus a term, which is kappa over sigma, again, kappa for the gate term, sigma for the drain term, times the input voltage, in this case, which is the gate voltage. And I use the drain voltage as the output. Now I can choose different things, but typically choosing a gate voltage as an output is kind of a hard thing to do given there's no current going, going through that node. So that's why you usually see one case here. And this is now the output voltage in terms of gain, and I can just look at the change of it, is going to be delta kappa over sigma. Now I could rewrite the bias current, and this is an interesting approach, right, is to say, well, I know that the original bias current is going to be a particular gate voltage, source voltage, and drain voltage. In this case, the source voltage is still at ground. And I can argue that's all bias current, and then everything else is an addition to it. So there's going to be some change in the input voltage uh, times kappa, and some change in the output voltage times sigma, which actually simplifies certainly the mathematics, as well as when you get into the higher dynamics, it makes it a lot easier. A similar example of hers occurs on the common gate structure. And what I will see here is that since the gate is fixed, I'm now going to just solve it out. And I will see a, a shift in the input voltage as, as a function of the output voltage. But now the only term that really goes in common of these two is sigma. So I get 1 over sigma. And my gain then turns a BV out of 1 over sigma, basically 1 over sigma times Vn. Makes a lot of sense, actually, what you can come up with. Uh, you can also see this kind of delta notation that we use, and you'll see us using this quite a bit in all sorts of different forms and approaches. Um, if for those who've thought about things like small signal modeling, it's kind of half of the way there. It gives you the ability to to find an, a good point to set your to set a biasing point, which some people like to call maybe a DC point, but it kind of depends on your perspective there. And then this is all of the remaining large signal changes that are still going on. So you see the minus Vs, sigma Vd. Notice one other thing, that in this case, this one is inverting. And for those who've done CMOS inverters, a CMOS inverter is a circuit of this form. And it's an inverting high gain amplifier. This one is a non-inverting high gain amplifier. Why do I say high gain? Well, kappa is near 1, but sigma is a term that's typically small, 0 0.01, 0 0.001. So when you take the inverse of that, it's a, very, it's a very large quantity. And so this is what we will see typically. Now, for those of you who are wondering, well, how would I think about this from a small signal perspective? Um, I, it actually would be a case of looking at just how would this transistor work. The current source that's biasing it goes away in this case because it just becomes an open circuit. There is basically no additional current for any change in voltage. You expect it to be an open circuit. Here, I have a transistor, but I have three terms always, right? There is always a source term, a gate term, and a drain term. Well, the source term is at zero, so I simply just can ignore that particular current source in the small signal modeling. In this case, that means me with two terms. 
Gn times Vn, which is its gate term, and V drain, which is its output voltage over the output resistance. So as a result, I get delta V out as minus Gm R0 times delta Vn. I remember Gr or Gm R0 in subthreshold would just be kappa over sigma. And so everything is consistent. But when you're above threshold, the math gets messier, so you may or may not want to always do it that way, but there are other ways to approach those questions. For the common gate case, again, the gate is held fixed, so that current source goes away. So now I'm only left with two current sources, one which is GS Vn and one which is V drain over, over R0. And if I simply write KCL at this node, these two currents have to be equal, and I get that the change in the output voltage is GS R0 times delta Vn. And again, if I remember from subthreshold cases for basic structures, it's going to be 1 over sigma. So everything stays consistent. But what's nice to know is that certainly in subthreshold and basically above threshold, you are actually are linear in the large signal case, not just in a over a small region. Um, and this actually gives you a tremendous amount of power when you put your entire system together.